Hey, everyone. We're here for another episode of the New Stack Shorts. And today we are getting to see a demo about Teleport and Teleport 9. Joining me is Ben Arendt. And Ben is a developer relations manager at Teleport. Ben, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So why don't we just get right into the demo? Okay. So for people who aren't familiar, Teleport is... You know, our marketing slang is like, it's the easiest way to access all of your infrastructure. What that really means in like developer speak is, it's, you know, a very fancy and advanced bastion. And because it's sort of a bastion, we have both a web UI and a CLI. You know, we have this kind of question all the time, like, is it okay to put your teleport bastion on the public internet? We sort of architect it in such a way that we think it's secure enough to go through multiple security audits, so it's okay to have the login. We enforce second factor if you have local users, um, either through a hardware token or an authenticator app. But I'm using our community edition, so I'm going to log in with um, GitHub SSO. Since I'm already logged into GitHub, it will take me directly to Teleport. You can see this is my GitHub username. It's a very original, it's my own name. And you know we've landed into this view. This is the view of all of our the service that I have. Teleport started off with providing uh, SSH access, and in the background for people who are using SSH, we use um, SSH certificates on the back end as opposed to public private keys. So each one of these machines has a Teleport agent running on it, and that deals with the CA rotation and access. But if you're accessing it, I'm going to pick a, which one's an interesting one? Um, let me go to this one, like an Ubuntu server. And then I'm sort of in here. I can, you know, run HTOP, but LS, I mean, directory, just, you know, various commands that you'd be going about. Um, and we have full support for SCP and everything else, but I'm going to just exit. And one of the core things with Teleport is, is we have a full audit log of what's happened. And along with the audit log, you can see I, this one had enhanced session recording. So we have like very detailed information about what happened during the session. So if I come in, you know, this is the command line not found. And then we finally have a session end event. When does this become useful for, for people? It's actually interesting, you know, our uh, enterprise clients would say it's all about like compliance, auditing, but we have many um, community users who also use this like a journal. Mm. So if you're accessing your home lab or you did something, it could be helpful to know like what exactly you did that one time. And you can go back like, oh, what did I do last week on this machine? And so you mm -hmm. can come back in, it's almost like a, you know, you can copy and paste this and it's like a TiVo for your terminal. Mm. Although I guess, you know, TiVo's. Not as popular anymore. I guess like a <laughs> Twitch replay. Digital video recorder or something. Yeah. And so, yeah, we have full session recordings. Um, you see there's some other roles that have happened. And there's also the ability to join active sessions. So this lets you add other teammates. So you can like pair debug on things. And I think we talked previously about moderated sessions. I don't have moderated sessions enabled on this one, but I can invite someone else. Oh, I think I can't. Uh, join this session because it's uh, Sasha's session. Our CTO has currently started one. Um, it's sort of an example of how you can sort of join or have sort of RBAC requirements of joining or not joining. We have um, application support. This is sort of interesting. You know, these are traditional applications that are protected behind Teleport. So my Grafana instance is in a VPC. And if I launch this one, um, it's taking me directly to Grafana. So this Grafana.teleport9 Asher.earth. This is the only way in which you can access this Grafana instance. And so you can protect, let's say you're like Jenkins server or wiki, all behind Teleport. So you have the same SSO flow and also use JWTs for login. One interesting addition, you know, I talked about AWS Management Console as sort of a, another place in which you can get pretty privileged credentials. 
We've added support for AWS Management Console, so you can define people a specific IAM role. In this case, I'm only assuming the uh, CloudWatch role in my example. And you can see I'm doing like a fair amount of redirects here. Um, but I've logged in as a, a um, AWS IEM role, and I can go about CloudWatch. And if I was to come to, let's say, EC2, you'll notice um, it will probably all error out. Oh, no, I have access to EC2 too, in this case. Um, and so this is sort of another sort of area in which Teleport is helping protect our customers. You know, we, I think we talked a little bit about Kubernetes. It's the same, it's the same flow. I can log in, um, you can get pods. You can only access Kubernetes clusters through the command line, but we have instructions here about how you access um, Kubernetes clusters using your terminal. And this is the same with our database support. Um, you access everything using um, your terminal and your command line tools. But once you've access those, um, you can just use the standard, like whether it's psql or like Redis CLI, it feels like very familiar. And so we try not to kind of get in your way. So uh, you've done a lot of work on the back end. What have you done in, you know, with the architecture to allow this? Because this allows for a lot more abstractions than, you know, Kubernetes users would have had a year ago, two years ago. And it seems like that's something we see a lot of is these abstractions. I'm curious on that architecture that you're, you've developed. Yeah, we kind of build upon it. So um, if I go to my role here, you know, we select the default sort of Kubernetes groups and Kubernetes users. In the background, this is all backed by um, short-lived certificates. So the kube config that you get is like a native kube config. But instead of being like a long-lived kube config, the kube config is only uh, provides access for however you've defined. So mine, it's 30 hours. Ah. Once I have that kube config, I can just, you know, go about my business. But in 30 hours time, I'll need to um, re-authenticate again. And this is sort of the example of like, if I have teammates come and go, I don't have to worry about cleaning all that all up because they, whatever credentials they obtained has automatically expired after 30 hours. That's a, and that's really core to the teleport story is that are those short lived certificates. And so you're building on that premise here. Yeah. And the addition of um, teleport nine is we have machine ID. I have a Ansible server here, which is in my VPC. And so I'm going to connect and we'll get to Ansible. And I have this T-Bot service here. Um, this is sort of running, and T-Bot is automatically renewing certificates every 20 minutes. And my Ansible config is configured, you know, just use standard SSH. So if I uh, Ansible, if you look at my config, this is pretty standard. But you can see here the arguments are it pulls in the config from this machine ID folder. If I, uh, let me show you my SSH config, which is kind of interesting, is that this has been automatically generated for us. And one of the problems that we saw with our customers are like dealing with the correct um, SSH proxy command can be sort of like difficult, a bit intimidating for it to work. And sort of out of the box, this sort of works for you. And then for the end user running Ansible, so if I go Ansible run, and run. Hold on, let me see if my, let me just clear my screen. Okay, so if I, uh, I think it's actually playbook. I run my playbook. And then if I actually come back in here to my active sessions, you can see that this is starting to populate. And these are the robot sessions gathering facts. And this is what I've talked about previously about the visibility into, you know, what service accounts or CID se servers are doing. Um, you know, it's finished its run now. And we have a full sort of audit log. 
and I think we talked about this sort of interesting. You see how like Ansible works. It actually works by like SCPing a folder up to the machine. And all of this information is sort of captured in um, like the teleport.org. And so that's, I guess, a quick introduction and the addition that's new in Teleport 9. It's the ability for you to use your standard tooling. But in the background, um, this is powered and supported by short-lived credentials that sort of uh, T-Bolt, which is a new service, is um, getting for you. I guess for my last question, I want to, is like talking about the challenges that people are facing with uh, um, microservices and, you know, the, the complexity that uh, surrounds microservices. And uh, the, the question that I, that I really have is about how do you see the Kubernetes environment evolving and then teleport evolving with it? Yeah, that's a, a great question. You know, I think in the Kubernetes ecosystem, the same with teleports, you know, adding and managing and replacing of secrets is there's still quite a lot of overhead. Um, the way in which we see sort of T-Bot working is the same way, you know, we're sort of making it easier for you to obtain these short-lived credentials without having to think about it, and then also providing uh, tooling to make it easy to terminate it. You, we think of sort of uh, machine ID to do the same thing for sort of machine-to-machine -machine communication as Let's Encrypt did for TLS certificates. You know, it used to be a big pain to, you know, go to your SSL provider, you buy your certificate, you need to upload it, right. you redo the config. Since you only do it once a year, you like take down production, like no one's used to refreshing it. Mm. And I think we generally see like as an industry, we'll be moving from these um, sort of long lived tokens and secrets and service credentials to more automation and services that can sort of help um, automate it and rotate it without, you know, like a person worrying about it. And I think Kubernetes is a great example as you have more microservices, and more teams. It might be fine if you have four microservices, but I think, you know, it's examples of like Uber having a thousand and it's difficult to to have those same security best practices across your whole fleet at scale. And then automating everything is sort of the way in which sort of teleport can hum, come and um, help those organizations. Well, great. Well, I want to thank you, Ben, for taking the time to give us a quick demo of Teleport 9. Look forward to talking with you again soon. Yeah, great. Thank you for having me. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more videos like this, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're on all the major social media platforms. You can always find us at thenewstack.io. We hope to see you soon.